Hello, this is Matthew Randall, and welcome to this tutorial on MatchMover. MatchMover is a piece of software which comes with uh, Autodesk uh, Maya, uh, and what it actually does is uh, it takes an image sequence, uh, so a JPEG sequence uh, of a video shot, and what it does is it works out where the it basically match moves the camera, so it works out uh, where the camera was that was used to shoot that shot. Okay, um, so uh, effectively doing the match move for us, and um, this is really useful because uh, we can export this data uh, and move it into Maya, so that we can actually have a virtual camera that exactly matches the real camera. That means that any virtual element in our scene, uh, in front of the camera, um, uh, when we render that out or that animation out. Uh, of the object in our scene and then comp it onto our real scene uh, then the movement will 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 fit exactly okay so um, let's get ourselves started what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to go and open up or I'm going to load in an image sequence so I'm going to select the first image in the image sequence and let's just move this forward okay uh, first thing to be aware of is that we have this sort of uh, this, the name of the image sequence dot the number dot the extension. That's really important that you use that convention. So, in whatever software you use, whether that's uh, uh, After Effects or whatever, you want to use that naming convention. The name dot the number uh, frame number dot the extension. The other thing is notice this cache down here is sort of filling up. Uh, we may not, may I don't know if you did notice, but this cache is filling up as it as as we work on it. Having plenty of RAM available uh, for this piece of software is kind of useful because um, what will what will happen now as it played it through, it cached it all into memory, which is going to make it much quicker uh, for it to actually. Um, uh, it's going to make it much quicker for it to do the tracking because it can just access all of that in memory rather than having to go back to the hard disk. Okay, so what you'll see now is if I play this forward, you can see that it's playing it much quicker. Okay, because it's cached the video. All right, so that's something else to be aware of. Um, uh, if it has to keep accessing the hard drive, it does significantly slow down the tracking. Okay, um, what you can see is we've got a simple sort of dolly dollying into this table. Um, it's not the smoothest dolly in the world, but that, that's, that's fine for what we want to work with. Um, it actually hasn't been done on a track. It was uh, done on a platform with me sort of balancing on the platform um, uh, and uh, Sandy pushing me around on it. Um, but anyway, we've got ourselves a, a sort of cheap and dirty dolly here. And you'll also notice I've put in some uh, track markers as well. And we're going to use some of these track markers on the floor on the wall here to help us um, uh, uh, track the position of the camera. So the way that Match Move approaches this is what we have to do is we have to start off by doing uh, 2D tracks. So uh, that's done by tracking. Um, uh, so that's done in the same sort of way that we would have done a track in After Effects uh, by putting these just sort of tracking uh, high contrast uh, markers. So hence these sort of yellow markers, uh, tracking these high contrast markers. Um, in in 2D space, okay, they're 2D position within the shot, okay. Then what you do is you give uh, the software information about the camera, the um, so for example the uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, so for example the uh, uh, the the lens uh, the focal length of the lens and the camera aperture okay so it understands the field of view of the camera essentially uh, you input that and then what you do is you it'll, you do something called a solve and so it'll take that camera data it'll take the 2D tracks that you've done and then use all that information to kind of determine where that camera would have been in 3D space okay one of the critical things we want to do before we do anything is uh, is set up the camera uh, the frame rate here so you want to make sure that this frame rate uh, matches uh, the destination frame rate or the source frame rate but ultimately the destination frame rate so we shot this at 25 frames per second that's the destination frame rate that I want to use okay um, so I'm gonna set that to uh, 25 frames per second if you can't access this menu uh, just go into windows and you should have the project window is, is what you're after there 
in fact, sorry, the parameters window is what you're after there, okay? And select sequence, and you can see that that information comes up. So set it to 25 frames per second, uh, or whatever the frame rate is that you shot it in, okay? Because uh, obviously it doesn't know the frame rate because we've just inputted a uh, JPEG sequence, okay? Um, also, make sure that the JPEG sequence that you output matches the, uh, not just the frame rate, obviously, uh, but uh, uh, but matches the uh, width and height, the, the resolution uh, of the uh, destination um, uh, video that you're working towards as well. Okay. Now we've discussed all that, let's put some tracking markers in. So I'm going to go and track here. We've got a shadow here, and the shadow here is not going to cause us a problem. Shadows can cause us a problem wherever we've got, uh, if, if the shadow's caused by a moving object, such as a, a person walking around the set or something like that, that would cause us a problem. In this case, the shadow's not going to cause us a problem. Um, what else can I say on, on, on that? Yeah, so the key part is that we're tracking, what we're tracking in here, are static uh, uh, or fixed elements within the scene, not moving elements. Um, I hope that kind of makes sense. So if we had a person moving around, you wouldn't want to track that person because uh, that's going to just confuse the camera. We need to track things that are fixed positions within our frame. The same goes for things like obviously shadows that might be moving or reflections because obviously reflections change as the camera moves around. Uh, you can see kind of the reflection kind of changes a bit okay and things like tracking points like this where this you know here's a high contrast point and you may consider that to be a good track here but um, that's not a fixed point uh, you'll see that this point actually slides along uh, the um, it slides along here uh, this sort of baffle here okay and you can see it's not actually a fixed point that we're doing. You're actually tracking where the line of sight kind of intersects the sofa and the baffle, okay? Um, something else to be wary of as well is when you're, when you're setting your tracker, so uh, if I go File, New, Track, and I put a track marker on, say, something like this, where it's a line, what you'll find is when I track forward, what you'll find is it, the tracker is moving up and down the table, and that's a bad track. You know, it needs to be fixed solid. Okay, so you can see that it's getting confused. It's just tracking up and down the table. That's that's a bad track. Okay, uh, to get this tracking window up, if you haven't got it, just go track. Uh, sorry, just go window, uh, track window, and that'll bring up this track window. So I just want to go and delete that track. I'm just select the track and delete it. Okay. So now I want to go and crack on adding my tracking markers. Um, what I tend to do is uh, zoom in. So I can click on that and then zoom in nicely here. And then holding Alt, I can kind of pan around my screen. And that helps me kind of more accurately work with, with the video. Okay, so now I'm going to go New Track, Add a Marker. I'm going to add it to uh, the bottom corner here. I think it's going to be the best position to track. There we go. And so that's tracked the position. You can see that's followed it. And it tracked it very, very quickly. What you want to do is as it's tracking it and it brings it up in this corner, have a look in that corner window and you get an idea of how well it's tracking. But obviously it's doing it so quickly uh, in this case that it's kind of difficult to use. But uh, that's fine. And then what we can do, I can then refine this. I can go to the last frame and click on it and refine the position of this track. Let's have a look. Okay, just refine the position of this track and then go uh, track backwards. And what it's going to do is it's going to use the combination of the backwards track and forward track data to kind of create a more accurate or a potentially more accurate track. Okay. In fact, I don't think that's really improved it. It's got bits of here. Where you've got yellow here, that means that the computer's, it's, it's what it's doing is indicating the computer's confidence that it's put the tracker in the right position. So where it's gone yellow, it means it's not very, com it's not as confident as it would be in green. Uh, and where it's very, not very confident at all, you'll get red appear here as well. Okay. But actually, that's pretty good. That's actually quite accurate. So I'm okay with that. Okay. So. Uh, that's our first track. Um, now what I'm going to do is add some extra tracks. So I'm going to track these markers here on the floor. Um, so I'm going to go 2D tracking new. Let's track this corner here. Okay. Great. 
Um, so I'm going to try and sort of move through these real quick. Uh, I'm going to go uh, new track, track this corner here. Okay, again, tracking nicely. Okay. There's a few points where it's not sure, so I'm going to try. So where I've got that sort of yellow come up, I'm going to, and it's not quite spot on. I'm just going to go and track that back. Um, track backwards. There we go. Let's just have a point where let's have a look where it's not quite sure. Track that forwards. Great, and then track backwards. Oh, you can shift, you can press F3 to track forwards and shift F3 to track backwards. So you'll probably see me kind of whack in new markers and track forwards and backwards quite quickly here, uh, just to kind of move through this uh, tracking phase uh, for you reasonably quickly. Uh, again, I'm going to move this here. Just go shift track back. Okay. Then I'm going to add a new tracker. So new tracker. Move to the first frame, and I'm going to try and track. I'm going to try and track this top corner here. Let's have a look how well that tracks. Okay, so you can see it's having some issues here at this point here. Let's have a look at that, uh, and you can see, yeah, it's having some problems here. I don't know whether there's an artifact here or there might just be a bit of noise around this that seems to be causing a problem. Um, so I'm wondering. I'm going to try and reposition it and see what that does for us. Yeah, it doesn't improve it greatly. Uh, what I might do is just try and track a different point and see if I get a more solid track than that. Uh, the great thing about using these crosses is that you've got various corners that you can track on as well. Okay, and if you want to be really thorough, you could do multiple. You know, you don't have to just do one track on each marker. I could do four different tracks off this. I could do even more than that. You know, I could do six or eight tracks off this mark off the different corners. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different corners on this marker that we could track. And you could track, you know, three or four of those corners uh, and, and obviously combine that information to give you a more accurate uh, track. The more mark, the more track points you've got, then, uh, you know, uh, the law of averages or the, is going to dictate the is, is going to dictate that's going to be more accurate. Uh, ultimately, you want to get to about between seven or fourteen uh, track markers um, uh, as you're doing this. Okay, uh, so uh, we've got some way to go. I'm going to go a uh, new track marker. I'm going to try this corner here. Let's track that. Okay. Track it backwards. That seems to be have, have give me a little bit more luck. Uh, I'm just going to refine this first corner here and see what we get. A little bit concerned about this yellow here. Yes. Reposition that and track back. Okay, that's looking better. Look here, yeah. Track forward, and obviously you can spend a lot more time kind of refining the tracks than I'm doing here, uh, and getting this more accurate. Uh, and the other thing as well, it's, this is doing sub-pixel tracking um, um, as well. So uh, it's actually interpolating the pixel data and tracking at a sub-pixel level as well. This software, okay. Uh, track back and uh, I think I'm going to leave that uh, and I think that I'm going to leave that one there okay let's add I'm going to go and add a new track on the corner of this table here uh, go to frame one put a track marker on frame one and then track forward yay Okay. Um, track backwards. Okay, that's a really good stick. I'm happy with that. Okay. New track. Track 
call this table here, F3. Ooh. I keep starting on the last frame for some reason. Here we go. That's it, track that forward. Excellent. Let's go to this last frame here and just track it back. Excellent, okay. I'm then going to add some extra trackers, tracking markers to this new to this box here. Okay, let's try that. Track forwards. Ah, hang on. I'm going to delete that. Let's try again. Go to frame one. New track. I'm going to just I'm going to just track this dark point here and see how well that tracks. Yeah, you see, there's a little. You can see when it was doing that, it was just sort of slipping a little bit. Uh, so you want to kind of catch that. Um, you can, if you want to, you could just zoom in a little bit further. Uh, there's no reason why we can't do that. Okay, get an idea of exactly what's going on here. That's a reasonably accurate track. Can't see it going too far out, actually. Yeah, see, so it's drifting out there. So I would be tempted at this point to kind of grab this, move it back to where it should be, and uh, do a track back and track forward. Okay, let's have a look what that looks like. Yeah, see again, it's slipping a bit here. Catch the point where it's sort of the most out, if you like, and then track it back and track forward. That's looking a little bit better. So. going. And what I do then is just go to the last frame, just position that and track back. Yeah, that's looking good. Go to this frame. Let's just try track. Just reposition this. Do a track back. Track forward. Yeah, that's looking better. Okay. Okay, and I want to zoom out. Uh, here we go. And add another track here. Again, what I want to do is actually make sure I'm on frame one for placing my track points. That looks good. Okay, yeah, that looked pretty healthy. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm actually going to just go on this last frame. Ooh, just reposition it. And that's it. Track it back. Looking good. So it's just a matter of refining this. Track it back. Track it forward. That's looking good. Okay. Um and then um if I'm I need to track I need to add some more track points, but before I do that, I'm just going to have a look at the scene as a whole. Um let's have a look. Uh so if I just go reset the zoom now. Um one of the things to be aware of is the way that this camera the way that this sol software solves um, the uh, camera position, it's not just it's not just tracking, it's not just using where these trap points are in the 2D space of my video. Uh, it's actually 
uh, also looking at how they move in relation to each other. So you can imagine if there's a line, imaginary line through here, it's tracking how that line moves. But also, a key thing that it uses for tracking is something called parallax. Uh, and that's basically the idea that objects that are closer to us, you know, if I was tracking sideways, uh, the objects closer to us will appear to move, will, will to appear to move across the screen, uh, across the shot faster than objects further away. Okay, um, and that that's that's called parallax. Okay, and that's obviously just due to the f field of view widening, uh, the f uh, widening. Uh, uh, as we as as we go further from the camera. Okay, um, so what you'll see here is we've got some really good parallax going on. If I just tracked a load of markers on this wall, we wouldn't have any parallax, and we we could get a track from it, but it wouldn't give us much information about really where the camera is. By having this parallax, it's going to it's going to allow us to get a much better idea of where this camera should be in you know physically in 3d space and and you know what which angle it should be pointing in okay so that's something to be aware of uh so you can see that we've packed we've got stuff markers on the floor on the uh, table here all sort of various distances away from us and that's going to give us uh, again a, a really nice sense of uh, parallax okay um great the i'm going to go and add some extra markers onto this wall now so there we go uh, new track. Uh, in fact, let's zoom in. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to add a new track here. Let's track that. Uh, let's have a look how that goes. Yeah. So what's happening now is um, this marker actually leaves the screen. So you can see if I come here, you can see this is the edge of the shot. This is, uh, okay. And what's actually happening is the track it the the actual uh, this track's actually leaving the shot, and that's fine. That doesn't mean we can't use it. That's absolutely fine. Um, uh, we we can deal with that perfectly fine. Okay, uh, and you may have shots where if you're doing a large pan, if you imagine I was doing a large pan across the scene, then actually you're not going to have a you know if, if, you may have a, a situation where not a single track point exists for the entire duration. So you're going to have to create your track points. Your 14 track points from uh, layering uh, from multiple track points that you're uh, that in different parts of your scene that you come across as you do the pan. So that's fine. Um, and you can see it's tracked it to the last one there. I can just click on this, refine it, and then just do a track back. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, the only other thing to be aware of is when you have. Uh, uh, tracking markers like this where you're tracking for only part of a scene one of the things you want to do is you want to avoid um, a tracking marker ending on the same frame that a tracking marker is starting it's just one of those things with this sort of with this software that 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 where, where you've got a marker ending and another marker starting at the same time it can cause the uh, to kind of, the, the camera to kind of jump okay because you you're moving between sort of that tracking data it can cause the camera to jump a little bit, and that's something we, we want to avoid. Okay, I'm going to uh, go back to frame one, uh, add yet another tracking marker in here. New track, here we go. I'm going to track, I'm going to try and track the corner of this. Great. So, again, it's going to leave the scene. Here we go. At this point here, and what I want to do is on this last frame. I just want to go and do a track back. Perfect. So look how that goes. Yeah. Okay. Next thing I want to do is move across the screen. I want to track uh, on this other side of the wall here. I'm just going to use this sort of bit on the uh, bit of cloth that's come off the wall there. And I'm going to go and do another track there. So back to frame one. New track. Shove that on that point there. Press F3 to track it forward. Great. Again, go to the last frame, just refine it, and then just go Shift F3 to track it back. Okay, and that's what you want. You know, a nice solid track all the way through. We we can be confident with that. Again, what you can do is go through all this really finely with a fine tooth comb just to really check the track. Um, we we haven't. You know, I'm sort of not doing that too much here because I want to avoid uh, you know spending too much time on this tutorial. 
uh, or making the tutorial too long. Uh, I'm going to add another track here. Let's have a look and track that forward. Okay, so that's tracked reasonably well. Let's have a look how this looks. And it's going to go shift track back. Great. That's looking fine. Yeah, track it forward and then track it back. Okay. So that should kind of give us a reasonable stick. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And then finally, I'm going to do another track on this wall here. And the reason for doing that, uh, so if I just go and reset my zoom again. Okay, uh, the reason for doing that is um, w once I've solved this, not only does it give me the position of the camera, but it will actually give me the 3D position of all these points. So also I can use these four points here to work out, you know, where the floor should be. Okay, I can use these two points to work out where the table should be. I can use these points on the wall here, uh, especially if I go to the first frame, to work out where that wall should be. So I just want one trap point on this wall just so that it shows me where this wall should be. I can work out the angle that the wall should be because it, obviously it should be perpendicular to this, this wall and this floor, so that's fine. I just need that one track point. Uh, so when I bring it all into Maya, I can kind of use that information to kind of recreate the walls. So again, I am going to uh, do a zoom. Sorry, zoom in. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go and uh, add a new track. So I've added so many tracks, I've forgotten how to do it now. Let's have a look and. F3 to track it forward, great. And finally, just position that, shift F3 to track it back, great. Okay, so that's all our tracking data. And yes, I could refine that a bit more, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with that. Um, that's all our track points that, that I want to use. Uh, I'm just going to go and uh, reset the zoom here. Okay, and then, uh, so what I'm going to do is just go File, Save As, and then just save it here. Uh, I'm going to save it as version 3. Uh, save. There we go. Okay, and uh, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use these track points to uh, solve the camera and create that movement in 3D space.